hi we are learning numerical methods for initial value problem of first order ODEs. We have learnt Euler method, Rangikuta methods, we have also learnt some modified Euler methods. In the last class, we have derived midpoint method and the trapezoidal method. Midpoint method is a two step method and trapezoidal method is an implicit method. In this lecture, we will generalize these ideas and develop multi-step methods involving explicit and implicit methods. Recall that we are interested in approximating solution of the initial value problem y dash is equal to f of x y where the equation is posed on a closed and bounded interval a b and we are also given an initial condition y of x naught equal to y naught where x naught is some point in the interval a b. Generally, we take x naught to be equal to a just for the sake of simplicity. The first step towards developing a numerical method is to generate a partition for the interval a b. Let us take it to be equally spaced partition with the step size as h given by b minus a by n thereby we have n plus 1 node points which is also called grid points and they are given by x j equal to x naught plus j into h. The general form of the multi step method that we are interested in is given by this expression. You can see that here y j plus 1 which is the approximate value of y at the point x j plus 1 is given by the first term involving the linear combination of y j's and the second term involves the linear combination of the function value at x j comma y j's where the function f is coming from our initial value problem. Right? If you recall the Euler forward formula is given by y j plus 1 is equal to y j plus h into f of x j comma y j. You can clearly see that this method is also a particular case of this general multi step method where a 1 is equal to 1 and all a k's are equal to 0 for k equal to 2 to m. Right? Similarly, you can see that from this term b naught equal to 0, b 1 equal to 1 and all b k's are 0 for k equal to 2 to m. Right? So, that gives us the Euler forward formula. If you carefully observe, you can see that the formula involves y j y j minus 1 up to y j minus m minus 1. Right? And also from here, you can see that the formula involves the value of f at y j plus 1 y j and so on up to y j minus m minus 1. Right? Thereby, you can apply this formula again only for j starting from m minus 1 onwards whereas, for first m minus 2 points the value of the solution cannot be obtained from this method whereas, you have to use some lesser step methods something like Euler method or Rangikuta method to find y 1, y 2 up to y m minus 2. Then y m minus 1 plus 1 onwards you can go with this method. Recall that we have derived the midpoint method in the last class and it is given by y j plus 1 equal to y j minus 1 plus 2 h into 
f of x j comma y j. You compare this with the general form of the multi step method that we have given in the previous slide. You can see that we have to take a 1 equal to 0, a 2 equal to 1 and that will match the first term and similarly b naught equal to 0 and b 1 equal to 1 to match with the second term of the general form. And therefore, midpoint method is also a particular case of the general multi step method. If you observe Euler method is a one step method whereas, midpoint method is a two step method. The method that we have shown in this general form is a m step method for some given positive integer m. We are interested in particular in a class of methods called Adams multi step methods and these methods are written in the general form as this where you can observe that this is also a particular case of the general form that we have stated in the last slide and this form of the method is of interest to us. Here you can observe that when you take b naught equal to 0, recall that the first term b naught appears with f of x j plus 1 comma y j plus 1, right. So, if b naught is 0, then this term will not appear and you will have all the terms involved in this expression are known to us already from our previous calculation. In that way, we obtained an explicit relation for y j plus 1. Such methods are called Adams Bashforth method and they are basically explicit methods. Whereas, if b naught is not equal to 0, then the right hand side involves the function value evaluated at y j plus 1. In that way, we have an implicit relation just like what we got in the trapezoidal rule, right. And therefore, these methods are implicit methods and they are also called as Adams Moulton method. Let us see how to derive this Adams methods. Again, we will have to use the integral form of the given initial value problem. And here you have to note that to derive Adams methods, you have to take the limit in the integral as x j to x j plus 1. Okay. So, do not choose anything else, you just have to take x j to x j plus 1 and thereby the integral equation is taken only in this form for deriving the Adams method. And now, how to derive the Adams method? You can see that we need to precisely get the values of b k, right? That is the only work involved in deriving Adams method of any particular number of steps. So, what you have to do is first decide the value of m and then you replace the integrand f of s comma y of s. Remember, the integrand is basically a function of two variables, but since we know y in terms of x, you can view f as function of x only and thereby you can construct an interpolating polynomial for the function f as a function of x. At the grid points x j minus m plus 1 to x j plus 1. Okay. So, once you are given these nodes and the function values for that you of course, need to know the function values. Then you can construct an interpolating polynomial and then say it is denoted by p of x then replace this integral by integral x j to x j plus 1 p of x dx or p of s d s. Okay. So, that is the basic idea of deriving Adams methods 
for Adam Bashforth method, remember we should not take x j plus 1 y because in Adam Bashforth method, which is an explicit method in the previous slide we have seen that explicit methods come with b not equal to 0 and therefore, you do not need to include x j plus 1 as a node in your interpolation for Adam Bashforth method and thereby the nodes for Adam Bashforth method are taken as x j minus m plus 1 to x j only. You do not need to include x j plus 1 because this is an explicit method. On the other hand, for Adam's molten methods, we need to have the node points starting from x j minus m plus 1 to x j plus 1. So, x j plus 1 is included in the nodes because Adam molten methods are basically implicit methods. Let us try to illustrate the construction of Adam's Bashforth method with three step means we are taking m is equal to 3. Let us see how to derive the method in the case of m is equal to 3. We basically have to obtain the values for the coefficients b in the general expression. So, when you take m is equal to 3, Adam's method in the Bashforth form will be given like this. Note that you do not have b naught f j plus 1 term here. We do not have this. We only have the explicit relation. Okay. So, thereby when you go for Adam's Bashforth method, you have to take b naught is equal to 0 in the general Adam's expression. And now, we have to find this b i's where i is equal to 1, 2 and 3. We do not need to find 0, but we have to find b 1, b 2 and b 3. b naught is already taken as 0. Okay. So, how to obtain this? Well, that is not very difficult. What you do is you get the interpolating polynomial p 2 of x with grid points or node points as x j minus 1, x j minus 2 and x j and from there you take the integration of this polynomial to get the values of b i's. Remember, these are given precisely as f j l naught of x right plus f j minus 1 l 1 of x plus f j minus 2 l 2 of x. Therefore, when you integrate, you just have to integrate the Lagrange polynomials. That is why we can see that these b i's are obtained as the integral of the Lagrange polynomials. As I told, we have to approximate the integrand by the quadratic polynomial interpolating the function f at the node points x j, x j minus 1 and x j minus 2 and in the Lagrange form p 2 of s is given like this where l i's are the Lagrange polynomials. And now, you can see that if you take the integral, you have to perform these three integrals in order to get b 1, b 2 and b 3. Okay. So, in order to simplify our calculation, we will use a change of variable formula whereby we will change the variable s to u given by this expression. With this, you can see that the nodes x j, x j minus 1 and x j minus 2 are transformed to 1, 2 and 3 and thereby integrating the Lagrange polynomials becomes little easier if you use this change of variable formula. That is why we are going for this. With respect to the variable u, the quadratic interpolating polynomial is denoted by p 2 tilde and that is precisely equal to p 2 of s which we want to 
actually use in our calculation, but just for the sake of easy evaluation of the integrals, we are going for p 2 tilde with the variable u. Let us see how p 2 tilde looks like. p 2 tilde is precisely f j into L naught tilde plus f j minus 1 into L 1 tilde plus f j minus 2 into L 2 tilde, where L tildes are the Lagrange polynomials with respect to the variable u. And now, you can also see that integral x j to x j plus 1 p 2 of s is precisely h into integral 0 to 1 p 2 tilde of u d u. If you recall, we want to replace the integral in our integral equation y j plus 1 equal to y j plus integral x j to x j plus 1 f of s comma x of s d s. Right? So, here we want to replace f by p 2 of s, but for the sake of simplicity we are now going to replace this integral here and thereby get a approximate value for our solution. Let us go to do that. So, we want to replace our original integral by this. Let us see how this integral looks like. It is nothing but h into f j into integral 0 to 1 L naught tilde of u plus f j minus 1 into integral 0 to 1 L 1 tilde of u plus f j minus 2 into integral 0 to 1 L 2 tilde of u. right? So, let us evaluate these three integrals and see how they look like. Let us take the first integral, integral 0 to 1 L naught tilde of u du. Now, you see the Lagrange polynomial is given like this. It is more easy for us to integrate it because the grid points are now the integers and that can be easily evaluated and obtained as 23 by 12. It is not very difficult, you can directly get it. Similarly, integral 0 to 1 L 1 tilde is given by minus 4 by 3. Recall this is B 1, this is B 2 and similarly, integral 0 to 1 L 2 tilde is given by 5 by 12 and that is B 3. So, we got B 1, B 2 and B 3. We can substitute these values to get the Adam Bashforth method which is a three step method. For that we just have to replace the integral in our original integral equation by this quadrature formula now. Let us do that and that gives us b 1 equal to 23 by 12, b 2 equal to minus 4 by 3 and b 3 equal to 5 by 12, which gives us finally the three step Adam bash fourth method as this expression. So, it is not very difficult for us to derive this method. Similarly, you can also get the Adam bash fourth method with step 2 3, 4 and so on. Let us have some observations. Here you can see that y naught is of course, given from our initial condition. Once we have this, can we get y 1 from the three step Adam Bashforth method? Just observe that in order to get y 1, you need to take j equal to 0 in this expression. Right? That gives us y 1 equal to y naught plus h by 12 into 23 f of x naught comma y naught. Right? That is what is denoted by f naught here. Up to here it is ok, no problem. Let us see the next step. The next step is 16 times f of x minus 1 comma y minus 1 what is x minus 1? x minus 1 is nothing but x naught minus h. Again, you can see that 
x naught minus h is not in our domain of interest because we have only the interval a to b on which we have defined our initial value problem. We always take x naught equal to a and therefore, x naught minus h is lying outside the domain of interest. right? Therefore, we do not know whether y minus 1 exists or not even if it exists, we have no interest to calculate it. right? Therefore, we cannot apply the three step Adams Bashford method for computing y 1, because we do not know these terms. Similarly, you can also cannot get y 2, because to get y 2, you can see that you have to put j equal to 1 and that makes this term to be f minus 1 right up to this it is ok but this term is outside our domain of interest therefore even y2 cannot be obtained from this method so what we have to do is we have to use some other one step method like Euler method or Rangikuta method to get y1 and when you go to y2, you may use a one step method or two step method to get y2 and then y3 onwards, you can use the three step Adam Bashford method. Okay? So, that is the idea of implementing the three step Adams Bashford method. Now, coming to the local truncation error, we can see that the m step Adam Bashford method is of order m. If you recall, we have seen that the forward Euler method is of order 1, whereas we have also derived Rangikuta method of order 2 and order 4. You can see that Adam's Bashford method with m step is of order m. Why it is so? Well, it is not very difficult for you to see what we are doing in the derivation of the Adams Bashford method. We are replacing this function which is appearing as the integrand in the integral equation, right? We are replacing this by the interpolating polynomial and thereby we are committing an error which from the interpolating polynomial theory, we call it as the mathematical error. We can also call it as a local truncation error here. And if you recall from theory of polynomial interpolations that the mathematical error involved in the interpolating polynomial is given by this expression. Here you can see that S belongs to the interval t j to t j plus 1. right? Therefore, this is something like h may be less than h and this is something like some constant times h and similarly everything in this product will be some constant times h and therefore, this product will be some constant times h to the power of how many terms are there here? There are m terms. Therefore, this contributes to h to the power of m. Thereby, you can say that the function is approximated by the polynomial interpolating the function at some node points with the truncation error of order m. Right? Then what we are doing? We are taking the integral of this function because in our integral equation, this function is appearing with an integral over x j to x j plus 1. Remember, x j to x j plus 1 is the interval with length h. Right? We have this integral plus the error that we are committing in this quadrature formula is of order already you have h m. Now, when you integrate that error, you are again accumulating one more h coming from the length of the integral over which we have taken the integral. Right? 
So, that contributes one more h here and thereby the integral will have the truncation error with order m plus 1. Now, if you recall in Euler forward method, we had the truncation error of order 2, but we have seen that the method is of order 1. Similarly, when we derived the Runge Kutta method of order 2, the truncation error was of order 3. Okay. So, this is because when we go to find the order, we are precisely taking the way we are approximating y dash. When we go to approximate y dash, we have to divide by h on both sides of the approximation. Right? That will generally reduce the order of the method by 1 when compared to the truncation error. Right? So, the same idea goes here also. You can see that the approximation that we have taken for the quadrature rule is obtained with the error of order m plus 1. Therefore, the truncation error is of order m plus 1 and that implies that the method will be of order 1 less that is m. So, in that way the Adams Bashford method with m steps will be of order m. This is an important point you have to keep this in mind. Now, as I told you we have derived the three step Adam Bashford method. Similarly, you can also derive four step Adam Bashford method even two step you can easily derive one step is trivial, but if you go on like this 5, 6 and so on you can derive them. These expressions are there in the literature. However, these calculations are little difficult. We will not go to do any problem with Adams Bashford method of order 5, 6 or so on. Maximum we will restrict ourselves to Adam Bashford method with step 4, not more than that. Once you got the idea of how to derive the Adam Bashford method, you can also derive Adam's Moulton method similarly. The only difference is that you have to include one more grid point that is node point x j plus 1 and thereby you will be constructing a polynomial of degree 1 greater than the degree that you had with Adam Bashford method. Otherwise, the derivation goes exactly the same as we have illustrated in the three step Adam Bashford method. You can easily derive the Adam's Moulton method with step 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, you can also go on, but we will only restrict ourselves to maximum 3 or at most 4. Okay? We will not go more than that. Of course, from the examination point of view, we will not go more than 2 because it is very difficult for us to remember these formulas and even in the Adams Bashford method, we will not go more than step 3 in the examination and coming to the order of Adam Moulton methods, you can see that the order of the Adams Moulton method will be one more than what step you have taken. So, for instance, two step Adam Bashford method will be of order 3. Similarly, this will be of order 4 that is the three step Adam Moulton method will be of order 4 and so on. Why it happens like that? Because if you recall in the Adam Bashford method, we approximated the integrand f by the interpolating polynomial of degree p m minus 1. Right? Whereas, here you will be adding one more node x j plus 1 and thereby you are approximating the integrand by the interpolating polynomial of degree p m. Right? So, in that way the truncation error of the Adam Moulton method will be of order m plus 1 and therefore, the order of the method will be 1 less that is m plus 1. That is how the Adam Moulton method just because it is implicit you have to include one more node point into your 
polynomial construction and that will increase one order in the Adam Moulton method. Now, let us illustrate the predictor corrector method using the Adam Bashforth and Adam Moulton method. In this, what you have to do is first you have to fix the m value, which will tell what is the step that you are taking in Adam Bashforth method and then you have to go and choose one step less in the Adam Moulton method because if you take m step method in the Adam Bashforth method thereby you get the order m in the explicit form to match that with the Adam Moulton method you have to take one less because Adam Moulton methods order is one greater than its step because of the implicit term right. So, that is the important point you have to keep in mind. So, use one step method of order at least m and compute y 1 y 2 up to y n minus 1. Remember since we are fixing m step method you cannot use Adam Bashforth and similarly Adam Moulton method for computing the values of y at first m minus 1 grid points right. Therefore, you have to go for some one step method. It is better to choose a method which is of order m something like Rangikuta method of higher order you can take to compute these values. Once you have these values then to compute y j plus 1 for j equal to m minus 1 and so on you will now go with the predictor corrector approach. If you recall in the last class, we have introduced the predictor corrector approach for the trapezoidal method, right. The same idea will go on here. What you do is first find y j plus 1 using the Adam Bashforth method. There is no problem in doing this because Adam Bashford method is an explicit method. You have an explicit formula for y j plus 1. Once you obtain the value of y j plus 1 from the Adams Bashford method, you denote it by y j plus 1 star. And this is the predictor step. Once you have the predicted value of y j plus 1, you plug in that on the right hand side of the Adams Moulton method. Remember, Adams Moulton method is an implicit method. Therefore, you have y j plus 1 term on the right hand side also, right. So, substitute this predicted value on the right hand side of the Adam Moulton method and get y j plus 1. That is the corrector step in our predictor corrector method. So, this is the procedure you have to follow for the predictor corrector method. Let us just illustrate it with m is equal to 4. Remember to implement a predictor corrector method, you first have to decide what is m. Let us fix m as 4. Once you fix m, you first go to the table given for Adam Bashforth. We have fixed it as 4. Therefore, you have to take this formula for the predictor step that is what I am writing here. The predictor step will have this formula and for the corrector step sorry this is corrector step. For the corrector step you have to take the three step Adam Moulton formula right. In order to match the order you have to take one step less that is you have to take the three step Adam Moulton method and that is given by this formula. So, that will give you this formula where the first term that is the implicit term is now obtained by plugging in the predicted value here and thereby the right hand side now becomes explicit. So, you can get y j plus 1 without going for any nonlinear iterative method. So, that is the idea of predictor and corrector method. So, there is also another important class of methods called backward differentiation method. Remember, backward differentiation method can also be obtained 
by approximating the function f by a corresponding interpolating polynomial. Only thing is in the Adams method we will use the polynomial interpolation of f to approximating the integral right. So, we will use the polynomial approximation to approximate the integral in the interval x j to x j plus 1. Okay. So, that is approximated by x j to x j plus 1 p of s d s right. So, that is for the Adams method. Whereas, in BDF method, we will approximate the unknown function y by the polynomial and then we will differentiate p dash and use this as an approximation in our equation. So, that is the idea. We will go for the interpolating polynomial for the function y of x at these node points for some given m and then replace y dash by p m dash and that gives us a general expression like this. Recall what we had the general expression for m step methods it is given like this where the first term is given as it is whereas, the second term is taken with b naught not equal to 0 whereas, b 1 equal to b 2 equal to everything else is equal to 0. So, that gives us BDF method, whereas if you recall Adams method general form is given like this, where a 1 is not equal to 0, whereas a 2 equal to a 3 equal to everything else is 0, whereas b's are kept as it is. Okay. So, similarly, you can also get this a k's and b naughts by just replacing y by the corresponding interpolating polynomials, but we will not give any weightage for BDF methods in our course. With this, we will end this lecture. Thank you for your attention.